Hi there, I'm Dr. John. Today, we're gonna travel deep into the lungs to learn about breathing. Whoa! We just flew through the nose, past the vocal cords, and into the windpipe. We're getting smaller as we go further down into the lungs. Before we take that trip, let's take a big deep breath together. When you take a breath, do you know what you're breathing into your lungs? That's air. Now air can be a little bit confusing because you can't see it, but it's all around us. What are some of the ways that we can either see or feel air? If you blow on your hand, that's air that you're feeling on your hand. Or if you see branches swaying in the wind, that's air that's pushing the branches. Air lets you blow up a balloon and lets you blow bubbles. Some places don't have air, so we need special equipment to breathe. Are you ready? These scuba divers deep in the ocean are using special air tanks so they can breathe underwater. You see these bubbles? That's the air they're breathing out that came from their air tanks. Astronauts need tanks or tubes for air because there's no air in space. Okay, so back here on Earth, we know that air is all around us and we breathe that air. Why do we do it? Well, air has oxygen and our bodies use oxygen to make energy. So we can do things like flex our muscles. I have an idea. Why don't we use our special x-ray glasses so we can see the lungs inside the body? This is what your lungs look like inside the chest. They look kind of like pink balloons or sponges. Hmm. What's this thing here? Well, that's a muscle called the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a big muscle that controls breathing. When the diaphragm muscle flexes, it squeezes and pulls the lungs down and that brings air into the body. Once again, we are seeing it as your muscles doing the most important jobs in the body. You should say thank you. Your muscles would say, you're welcome. Thank you. Let's take a closer look at breathing. Air first enters the body through the mouth or the nose. I have an idea. Why don't we take a trip through the airways so we can take a closer look? Are you ready? Here we go. Whoa. We just flew through the nose, past the vocal cords, and into the windpipe. We're getting smaller as we go further down into the lungs, where we're finally gonna reach the... Alveoli. We're here in the alveoli, where the oxygen from the air moves into the body. Now we passed a lot of cool things along the way. Why don't we rewind and take that trip again, this time a little bit slower. Here we go. When you take a breath in, your nose starts working right away to clean the air. Your nose has tiny little hairs that are covered in something called mucus. What's mucus? Well, it's snot. That snot and these tiny hairs work to clean the air and remove dust and germs so that it doesn't make you sick. Goodbye. Your nose has another important job. There are special nerves at the back of the nose that allow you to smell. When air passes those nerves, you can smell all kinds of things like flowers or chocolate or oh, stinky things too. Let's keep moving. As air moves down towards the lungs, it passes the vocal cords. The vocal cords are small but strong elastic bands that open and close when you breathe and vibrate to make sound when we talk and sing. La, 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 la. After the air passes the vocal cords, it keeps going down into the windpipe. Do you know where your windpipe is? Just gently push on the front of your neck. You'll feel a tube that goes up into your mouth or down into your chest. That's your windpipe. As air goes down into the lungs, the windpipe branches or splits into smaller tubes. And these tubes get smaller and smaller the further air goes down. To understand this, think of the shape 
of a tree. A tree starts as a trunk down in the ground, and as it goes up, it branches until it reaches the leaves. The lungs look kind of similar, but let's first lift up this tree and turn it around. And let's pull the lungs on top. Great. You can see how the shape of the lungs is similar to the shape of a tree. And the alveoli are a lot like the leaves. Isn't it interesting that the leaves on a tree make oxygen so that our lungs and body can use that oxygen? At the bottom of the lungs, the blood vessels meet up with the alveoli. Oxygen moves from the air in the lungs to the red blood cells. And then the red blood cells return to the heart to get pumped all around the body. Here we go. This happens over and over, all day and night. And we don't even have to think about it. We're breathing when we're awake, and we keep breathing when we're asleep. Our brains control our breathing, so we get enough oxygen to the muscles that need it. My muscles are always in need of more oxygen. <laughs> Very strenuous workout. If animals need oxygen, just like you and me, how can they live underwater where there's no air to breathe? Well, sharks and fish and other sea creatures have something special called gills. They don't have lungs. They use gills to pull oxygen directly from the water. Now, dolphins and whales are mammals, just like you and me. So they have lungs and need to swim to the top of the ocean to breathe air. One thing that's really cool about breathing is that although it's automatic and we don't have to think about it, we can control it when we need to. Our breathing can speed up. It can slow down. And we can even hold our breath. Oh, don't do that for too long. Controlling our breathing is what allows us to talk and sing. La, 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 Remember the vocal cords? La, la. When we breathe out, air passes the vocal cords and we can control that to make words or sound. Hey, why don't we try something out together? I'll make a sound and then point to you and you copy it. Ready? Do, 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 do. I breathe for you. Such oh. ease.